Greetings, I'm Barrent and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. Today, I'm gonna to be giving you a special Kickstarter preview of the game Shoal. Now this game is by Lunar Oak Studio. I'm really excited to bring this game to you. There's a lot of different things going on in this game that make it super awesome. They are going to be having tower defense. It's going to have a huge campaign. There's gonna be missions and places to explore. There's gonna be miniatures and there's gonna be character development all inside this one game. It's really gonna be cool. Now, I was introduced to this game by William over at Hungry Gamer. He showed me the game and I thought, oh, I gotta try this game. So I was able to get a prototype copy of it and I'm able to do this playthrough for you. Now, if you're interested in a review and a playthrough, he's done one on his channel. I'm gonna put a link to his videos in the description below. Now, this is a prototype. Everything you see is subject to change as the Kickstarter goes forward and also as the game is developed. But the base mechanics are probably going to be the same, but it's going to be really cool to see how this game evolves. It's going to be hitting Kickstarter very soon, and when it does, I'm going to make sure to put a link right up here. So if you want to check it out, please do, and then you'll know if this game is for you. Now in this video, I'm gonna do an intro setup and we're also gonna go over some of the components and what they're gonna be doing in the game. Then we're gonna to get to be playing Shoal and I've got a special mission that I'm gonna be doing just for you. It's outside the campaign, so it's not gonna be spoiling anything. So let's go ahead and see if we can get through the game Shoal by Lunar Oak Studios. And if you're excited to see if we can, then I need you to meet me at the table. So now this game is going to be played on a board just like this. And in the middle is going to be our giant tower. We're only going to be using a cardboard standee, but in the actual game, there's going to be a giant miniature to represent our area where we come from. And it's going to be a city that's going to be able to be developed. And you're going to be adding different structures to it, not only in the miniature, but also on a sideboard that give you more advantages when fighting against the darkness. So I just want you to be aware that this is what we're playing on and that what you see in the middle here is not going to be a final copy at all. It's going to be way more impressive. Now here's our first character. We're going to be playing with four. This game we played solo and up to four people. And this is a fully cooperative game where we're working against the darkness. Now our first character I'm going to show you is the Pioneer. Now they don't come painted. I've painted them myself. And they're actually not, this is not a final product. This miniature does, ha, is set subject to change just like everything else. But I've painted him up and he's ready to go. Now here's our character card. This guy's the Pioneer. And there's more than four different characters that you're going to be able to play when you start playing the game. You can choose from a vast majority of fun and exciting characters. I have these base four and there's other ones you can choose when you actually do get the game. Now on this card it's going to show us a lot of things. One, it's going to show us that he gets an item and he also gets a light source. And the light source is how you're going to be able to expose and walk inside the darkness. And that's really, really important. Here's our speed value and also I want to mention this. This is not only how far you can move but over here is how much extra movement you can do if you want to spend any of your lux. Now lux is found right Right here. This is not only your life force, but it's also your light in the game. And as you move around the board, you're going to be exposing different tiles and be able to complete your missions and take out the darkness, these little enemies that are walking around. Now, as you go through, you're going to be lowering this. And then once it gets to the bottom, you're going to have to flip this to one and you're going to reload your Lux. It's kind of like reloading your gun, but you're reloading your Lux and you're going to put in a new cartridge. But we start at two, as it says up here on our character card. Also, it shows us our light source that we're going to be using. It's right here. And this is the type of pattern I can use when deploying light sources and also when revealing enemies in the darkness. So we have that and we also have our gun. This is our gun we're going to be using and again it shows you the pattern that the gun can fire and also how much damage it can do. Down here is if you ever want to really hurt something or you need three damage you can like overload your weapon but there's a chance you're going to damage it and you're going to have to spend time fixing it. Up here, we have the amount of actions you're gonna be using and also your speed value. And like I said before, you can go up in speed if you wanna spend some of your Lux. I've also put out a couple other tokens. These are our currency in the game. It's called Umbra. The mission we're gonna be playing, everybody starts with three. And on top of that, all of our characters get their own signature deck that is gonna be filled with different cards that only their character can use. And right here is one, for example. This one allows us to trailblaze the unknown. During a construction action, build an extra path. Now the cool thing about this game is you can use this card, this card, and every other card in the game for up to three different things. One, when you perform this action, what happens to be the construct action, it's gonna cost you lux based on your equipment down here. So it would cost me 
two locks to use it to create light in or on the board for us to walk around. But I can use this to subtract one from that cost. Otherwise, I can use it for its actual card purpose of what it is down here. And if that wasn't enough, you can use it for a third thing, which you can discard any card to help rem to you not take damage. I can block a damage coming in with this card. So there's so many different ways you can use these cards. That's a really, really cool experience to see. All right, that's our first character. I'm going to go ahead and quickly show you the other three and a little bit about them, but then we're going to move right into the rest of the setup. Now this is our Cyclops. He's kind of like, if you can't tell by the giant gun he's holding, he's, he's gonna be the like brute of our group. Now he only moves two and one as well. Now right here, I failed to mention, this is what would happen if you rolled a critical when you're actually attacking. It allows him to draw extra cards, but everybody has their own special ability down here. Now he again starts with the same amount of lux that everybody else does. He does have three actions, he only moves two, but he's got a bigger gun and his gun does two damage and it fires in this straight pattern here. Now that that means he can shoot at any one of these locations. He can't fire at both. He can only fire one, but he can fire at whatever location he has in that symbol. Also, of course, like I mentioned before, he's got his own light source. Now notice his light source doesn't illuminate as much as our pioneers. He can only illuminate what is in front of him. So that's this character. We're going to go on to the next one. Our next character is the Breathless. This is kind of our sniper of the group. He's gonna be able to shoot a lot farther than all our other characters. As you can tell by his gun pattern here, he can't even shoot in front of him. He can only shoot in the two squares ahead of him. Even though it's grayed out, that still means it's part of the pattern. He can actually hit in that area. Now his light source, of course, also only goes a couple of squares. That's going to be the Breathless. And of course, comes with its own deck of cards that is different from some of the other ones. But now she moves, or he, moves three squares as opposed to two like the other two characters did. And our final character is the Maynard here. He's able to do more of a close combat style of fighting. And look, he moves faster than anybody. He can move three squares and he could spend one of his lux to move an extra two. And if he wanted to move even farther, anybody can do this. They can double the amount of lux you have to spend to gain the next set of movements. So for example, he really needed to move. He can move three squares, pay a lux to move two. Then he could pay two more lux to be able to move two. Then he could move, pay four to move two more. So there's a lot, he could really get moving if he needed to, but it's going to cost a lot of his light energy in order to do that. But this character can move quite far. But the combat this character can do is only close combat, but it does do three damage, which is one of the more powerful guns in the or attacks in the game, which is really cool. And as you can see down here, if he overloads his sword, he actually gets a bonus attack as opposed to doing extra damage. So that's our final character. I've already got them all set up for the game. All we have to do is draw our cards. Now that we've seen all of our characters, this is the Citadel board, or our Island of Light, as they like to call it. There's a lot of things going on. Now this is going to expand and grow more as the campaign progresses, but for this mission, there's not gonna be a lot we're gonna be doing with this. This track, though, is important. This is our prosperity. If our prosperity ever drops to zero, we have lost the game. Also, if we lose two characters out in the darkness, we also lose the game. So there's a few ways you can lose the game. Now, on this board, you see a lot of things that can happen. This area right here are the different things you're going to be able to put on to expand and grow your citadel through the campaign. And also up here are different factions. These factions, as you gain prosperity towards them or influence, you're going to be unlocking different equipment or different skills or even more technologies for our citadel that is going to expand as the game grows. And over here is a bunch of different tables that are going to be explained more during the campaign. Like I said, in the intro scenario that I'm doing, this board really isn't going to come into effect, but I do want you to be aware that there's a lot that goes on in this board. This is your whole city building experience here, and there's going to be a lot of cool things that happen. Now the final thing we have is the darkness. This game wouldn't be complete without an enemy, right? So we've got the darkness. Now again, this is all prototype material. We've got some of our basic darkness characters and then we've got some of the heralds here as well. And we also got our darkness board down here that is going to be showing us different things that happen as we play through it. Now there's a track right here. As this track goes up, we're gonna be exposing new abilities for our darkness creatures. And the stack is gonna change based on, of course, your mission and the campaign as things grow and develop. And these are gonna be able to show that the darkness can change every time you play. You're never gonna know what exactly some of the upgrades they're gonna have are. Now, of course, each of them do come with a miniature. This is our moth character. This again is subject to change and no, it's not painted. I painted it myself. This moth 
Sloth, though, has his own character card, and I'm going to show you a little bit about him. He is of gliding terror, is what they call him. He is going to have some special abilities down here, his health and his attack. So as he gets revealed on the board, he's going to take advantage of this power. Then he also does have two health, and he does two damage when he hits us. Also, if he gets a special... Uh, critical hit, he's able to shuffle in an incapacitate card into the deck, and all of them have a special power based on a critical if they ever roll it. And these are some of the powers that they're giving us. For example, he was going to give us incapacitate, which is right back here. So we would put this with the character that got it, and it says, when you draw this card, you lose two movement discard. So these are going to go into that deck of cards that we have. So like I said, it grows and develops not only in a positive way, but also in a negative way. Also, we have some other tokens that we're going to be using. And then of course, we have our heralds. These are kind of the more elite monsters inside the shadow realm here. These guys are going to be able to attack us or maybe not, depending on what some of their abilities are. They're going to have their own AI, which is separate from the actual base darkness creatures. The base darkness creatures have a very rudimentary system. Their goal is to get to that citadel and attack it. That's it. These guys are going to be more about trying to take out our characters. And if that wasn't enough, there is also another creature. And they're called the Outer Worlds. They're big giant bosses that you're going to be fighting inside this game. And they're going to be played on a different board. The board does flip. And there's a whole boss board on the other side. So as your campaign progresses forward or backwards, who knows? You might fall, stumble onto a boss as you play, even before you're ready for it. Who knows how this game is all going to develop? I'm just super excited to see how many different things they can unlock and explore inside this game. Now, also, when we go to set this up, we're going to be going through a mission A and B. And the way these missions work is you're going to get a little bit of flavor text about the mission. And then what you're going to do is as you continue through it, it's going to ask you to grab different cards. And these cards are going to continue the mission, either in a positive or negative way. So, for example, our mission for this scenario is to find the fugitive. You need to install a few detectors that will allow pinpointing the position with accuracy. So we're after a fugitive on the darkness. So we have to find him. Also, we have a mission B. It says the unusual movements of the shadows must be investigated further. The scientists of the Citadel ask you to scan a few fluctuating points, which are blips. And I'm going to show you what those are as well. And of course, it says if I've revealed five of them, you're able to continue on with the mission. And inside this deck, this is a whole bunch of missions and events that take place when you discover different lands in the darkness. So we're going to set up the board and you'll have a better understanding of how these work. So this is the mission we were given for our prototype. Let's go ahead and read it and then set up the board so we're all set to begin. It says the purpose of this mission is to track down a fugitive who stole materials of critical importance from the Citadel. You will need to place a series of detectors in the lands of the night to pinpoint the fugitive position. So we're going to go ahead and prepare the board as it shows right here. Then we're going to go ahead and put our Citadel Prosperity at 10, which I've already done. And we have to add four light streams, one to each adjacent exit. I'll show you how that works. We're also going to be using the enemy's basic shadows and the Herald, the Awakener. But he is scripted, so he's not going to come out of any type of bag or any type of construct. He's going to be actually scripted into this game. The Umbra that each player gets is going to be three. The phase that we're going to start with initially is the Shadow Phase. All right. Then we also are going to use the generation of one shoal die. Consider Herald faces as triangle and circles and one shadow for each singularity. I will show you how that all works. Shadow Menace is one threat on turn three. Now, this was that special shadow board I showed you. So as that track goes up, when it gets to turn three, we're going to gain a threat card. Then we're also going to reveal mission cards A and B, which I've already showed you, but those are going to be the two we have to use. And this is, of course, for a three to four player game. And you can play it solo and two, three, and four, and each mission has its own setup for that. But just know that the one that they've given us for this prototype is a three to four player mission. Now, according to our mission setup, we're going to go ahead and put out our level three, two, and one lance, and we're also going to put out our spawn points. Now, these red symbol right here, that's what it means for when used for up to three or four players. So if we're, since we're playing with four, we're going to put out all of the spawn points. Normally, you'd only put down three if you're playing a one to two player game. But we're going to put our lands out, and we're also going to put out our spawn points. So we're going to take our level one lands, mix them up so we don't know which is which, and we're going to place it down on the board right where it tells me according to my diagram here. So we're going to put it, what, one, two away from here, one, two right there. Next, we're going to put out our shadow lands. So we're going to mix those up as well and see which one we get out on the board. We're going to put it right there. 
Next, we have our level two lands. We're gonna mix those up. We're gonna put one of those out. It's gonna go right there. And then down in this quadrant, we have one of our spawn points and it spawns right there. This is the quadrant we finished setting up. I'm gonna set up all the rest of the quadrants. So I've gone ahead and finished setting up our board according to our mission. The only thing we have left to do is draw the cards for our characters. But before we begin, we have to get our cards for our characters. Now he starts with three cards. So we're gonna draw three from the top of his deck and see what they are. He starts with Sight Adjustment. During an attack action, re-roll the Scout die and keep the new result, all right? And this is gonna help him fight because I could pay just the cost or pay this card just to lower the cost of an attack action. Oh, I've got two of them. And then you know, Luminous Convergence. This is gonna help me construct things. It says during a construction action of a teammate, he or she can build an additional path. So as we're building paths, I could play this for somebody else. Very cooperative game. You're beginning playing cards on other people's turns to help them in their struggles against the darkness. Or of course, I could pay, play it for myself to lower the cost of me trying to construct illuminating paths as well. Now, of course, like I said before, at any time I could discard one of these cards to prevent damage. So those are his three cards. Let's see what the rest of our characters get. Now we're gonna draw cards for our Cyclops. He starts with four cards. So we're gonna go ahead and draw the four cards we get. One, two, three, four, let's see what they are. Okay, I can spend it for to lower his attack action power here, and it looks like I get plus one to my attack. One man army, during an attack action, you inflict one more damage if there is at least one ally within five cells. So if I can stick together with somebody, I can do more damage. That's pretty cool. Safeguard, I can use this card to prevent two damage for an ally. That's pretty cool. And then Shockwave, pull two different enemies within five cells toward this character. So he's very, obviously he's built mainly as a tank or a attacking role of some kind. He also, he's guys got two of those, why not? And of course, all these look like they can be used to help pay for an attack action, except for this one. This is the reveal action. It'll help me cost less if I decide to play it for that. Those are his cards. Next, we've got our Sniper. He's gonna get three cards. One, two, three. Let's see what he has got. Holding breath. So again, we can pay that for the attack actions and one for a, we can also pay this to help with our uh, reveal action if you want. Holding breath during an attack action. If this turn you didn't use movement points, you can hit an enemy like it is fully illuminated. So as you attack, you're gonna be more powerful attacking against illuminated characters. If you know where the thing is, you can attack it better. It kind of makes more sense. And sadly, if you don't, then it's gonna be harder to hit. But of course, this, got, this helps you being able to hit them no matter what. The Eye of the Eagle. Pay two movement points to raise the range of your weapon or a lantern by one until the end of the turn so you can see or shoot farther into the darkness. Relocating technique during the attack of a shadow. You can move one cell. If you leave the range of the shadow doing so, avoid any damage. Oh, that's a really good card. All right, those are his cards right there. And last but not least, we have our scout type character. This character starts with four cards based on the cards up there. One, two, three, four. This character has gotten safe trails. During a teammate's turn, give him or her three movement points. Wow, that will really help somebody like the Cyclops or the Pioneer. That's amazing. Of course, I can lower her or his movement action. He, again, with the movement action, I can lower it. It says, Dancer in the Dark, during an attack action, roll one extra die and choose the best result. That's pretty good. Save trails during a teammate. Okay, we've seen that one. And then Light Stream Surfer. Use this card to move the character to a connected light path within five cells. So you're gonna be making a lot of light paths around the board. As you can tell, the board is a big giant grid. And this person can now apparently move, kind of skid and surf right to where they need to be. All right, and that is that character's card. So I've placed our character out on the Citadel. Now normally there's a cardboard Citadel here, but I didn't really film very well on just as a standee, so I didn't even use it. Just know that there's a giant Citadel right here that we're gonna be able to start on when the actual game comes out. I'm really excited for that miniature. It looks so cool. And that's gonna conclude our intro and setup video along with a components overview of the game. I hope this helps a little bit in deciding whether or not you wanna back Shoal. Now I am gonna start the playthrough in the next video. And if you like this one, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell symbol so you know when the next video comes out when we begin our playthrough of Shoal. Also, please feel free to leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone. And don't forget to check out the Kickstarter page so you can see more about this great game. If you're excited to see if our four characters can delve into the world of Shoal, then I need you to meet me at the table.